Hello everyone and welcome to this Mather Civil webinar. My name is Norbert Kovac and I'm a technical support engineer at Midas. Today's presentation will be on multi-span post-tension box girder bridge designed to Eurocode. Just a few things about GoToWebinar. We have already confirmed that you can hear me. However, if you if you can't see the screen, this might be because your screen is minimized. So you can just click on the maximize icon, and this will be sorted. And also, if your screen turns blank at any point, this might be because your screen saver has kicked in. So you might want to turn this off before the session starts. About uh, the dialog box, you can hide this by clicking on the red arrow. And if you have any questions, you can just put this into the chat box and we will answer this as soon as possible. The webinar content, I will present Midas in a few words. I will be doing my uh, modeling in Midas Civil using the bridge wizard, along with the application of loads, analysis, ex uh, result extraction and design. So about Midas, it's the largest engineering software development company in the structural and geotechnical engineering disciplines. Midas Civil has been used for all the long span bridges as well as for conventional ones. On the left hand side you can see a partial list of some of our clients, all of which are from the global top 100, and on the right hand side you can see some of the projects for which Midas has been used, such as Bush Khalifa, the Beijing Olympic Stadium and Rusky Island Bridge. Moving on to today's model, here you can see an overall elevation in perspective of the bridge. This bridge is using a balanced cantilever construction method. As you can see it on the second drawing, the main span is 130 meters long and the ones on the, si on the side are 85 meters. Also, the pier is 40 meter high. So, as you can see it on the drawing, the diaphragm just above the piers is the largest section, as this is attracting the most moment, and the segments that are uh, constructed next to it are each representing one construction stage and as you can see we have 12 of these all of which are 4.75 meters long. Finally, as, uh, as soon as the tapering has been uh, done the key segment will be uh, put in in order to connect the fully supported zone with the uh, tapered part. On, in the left uh, corner you can see the section the diaphragm section. This is 24 meters wide and 6.5 meters deep. Also towards the center we have the shallower section which is 2.7 meters deep. We have a variety of tendons so for the diaphragm we have tendons which are jacked at only one end and as the construction progresses the tendons within the other sections are tensioned or jacked at both ends. The same applies for the bottom part, only in this case the tendons are jacked only into one direction represented by the arrows. So in, let me move to the software itself. This is the Midas Civil interface. At the top we have the ribbon menu, which is the latest technology of GUI. We have a variety of tabs, all of which are positioned in a logical order uh, to help your you in your everyday project. As you can see over here the geometry can be defined as well as the properties, the boundaries for this, the loadings can be applied, different types of analyses can be carried out and the results can be extracted. Design can be carried out for pre-stressed concrete and for steel reinforced concrete, steel reinforced concrete and for composite design. And finally, we can generate the report. So let me move on to the structures tab, which is the main focus of today's webinar. Here you can see that we have a variety of wizards for segmental bridges, suspension and cable state bridges, 
as well as for transfer, transverse and grillage models, and for more conventional bridges such as reinforced concrete, concrete slab and reinforced concrete frame and box curved bridges. So before I start with the balance cantilever bridge wizard, I'm going to define the material and the section properties. So for that, just go to properties, material properties, and here, instead of defining them from scratch, I'm just going to bring them in from a previous project. So just import and select the model. This is very useful, especially if you have uh, defined your materials and sections in a different project. You can use this over and over again, so you can save a uh, considerable amount of time. So just by pressing OK, you can see that both the materials and the sections have been defined in the dialog box as well as these have appeared in the works tree. Now these are blue, that means that they are not being used yet. So also you can right click on these, go into properties and check the standard which has been used for the concrete as well as the strength of the concrete and the material properties over here. Okay, so by closing that down, we can check similarly for the sections, right click and properties here you can see the parameters for the uh, diaphragm as well as the drawing for this. Okay, so let me move on to the wizard itself. So that's in structures, balance cantilever bridge wizard. In this dialog box you can see that we have different types of uh, bridges. We're going to use a type 2 today. All we're going to do is define the model information sections and tendons. However, to save up some time, I have already predefined these, so I'm just going to open up the wizard. So this is another advantage of Midas Civil uh, Wizard, that you can generate the wizard and you can save this, and you can use it at a later point. So as you can see now, the numbers have been changed. Let me go through these. So. Here is the material definition for the girder and the pier. The section is defined for the piers. The number of piers can be defined. Also, the dimensions of the pier table, key segments, piers, and for the fully supported parts. Okay. Also, because the software is going to generate us the construction stages, we need to define how long each stage is going to take. So that's done over here in the stage duration window. And we can also define the member ages. So just click on member age. And here we can define this for key segment, peer table, and so on. These ages will be used within the construction stage uh, stages, which the wizard is going to define for us automatically. And finally, the different zones can be uh, defined. So as you can see over here for zone 1 which is the tapering zone we have 12 segments each of which is 4.75 meters long. Moving on to the sections we're going to have uh, two sections one at the center so that is the shallower section and one at the pier table which is the diaphragm and the software is going to generate the tapering from the, uh, the diaphragm's size to the shallower. It also accounts for the form traveler load and the wet concrete loading. And as you can see, just by simply putting the load and the eccentricity, these can be accounted for. And finally, for the tendons, here, as you can see, the tendons are defined. As per the drawings on the right hand side, we can see the sections that, are, that we are using, so the shallower and the deeper one. The number of tendons can be defined, how many tendons we want at the top, bottom or the corner parts. Also the offset for the tendon uh, must be defined and finally the anchorage for both the tapered and for the steel parts can be defined. Finally for the tendon properties I'm going to define these now, so just click on the three dots, add 
and I'm going to input the name, so tendon. These tendons can be external or internal. Select the material and then specify the tendon area just by simply selecting the strand diameter and inputting the amount of strand. We can define the duct diameter. We can also account for the relaxation coefficient. So in this case, let's use the, Euro the European one. And also anchorage slip and the bonding type can be defined, such as bonded or unbonded. By pressing OK, you can see both in the dialog box and the work tree that this has been defined. And if I close this down, furthermore, we can define the checking stress. But for today's presentation, I'll just stick to the default. By pressing OK, the software is going to uh, the wizard is going to generate us the entire model. And on the left hand side, you can see how the work tree has built up. So let's go through all the things that we have obtained. So as you can see over here, we have 83 nodes, 76 beam elements. Let me expand the properties. So no, no further material properties have been defined. However, the tapering has been uh, done for us. So I can just double click on taper and activate this. And by rotating dynamically, you can see how uh, your tapering looks what your tapering looks like okay and now I can activate the entire model moving on to the support we can right click on any of the supports and display as you can see these are all defined for us also note that we are using the hexagonal shape which is representing the six degrees of freedom we also have our elastic links de uh, defined for us, so right click display and you can see these being displayed. Okay. So moving on to the loads, we the software defines for us the self weight as well as the form traveler load, so let's just display this and in this case let's go through the construction stages, so one by one. You can just scroll through these and you can see how the bridge is advancing and how the form traveler is uh, go moving along this. Okay, and then finally the key segment is being placed there. The software also defines us the. Let me undisplay this. Okay, let's save this as webinar. So the software also defines us the with concrete loading, so we can display this as well, and this is defined for every single uh, construction stage, and the bridge stress and other loadings as well. We can move on to the tendons, so let me display this, and for the tendons, you can check the ten each tendon one by one. You can also right click on this, go on to properties. And you can change the tendon properties for any of these. Okay, close that down. Let me show you the uh, tendons first. So go on to tendon profile, and here you can see the tendons from the front view. So as you can see, we have the tendons at the top of the sections, and as well as at the bottom of the sections. Also from the top view, you can see. If I zoom in, you can see where the anchorages are done at different points. Okay, so let me undisplay the tendons. And finally, the last thing that the wizard generates for us is the construction stages. So we can check these as well by clicking on the construction stage icon and just simply double click on any other stage. And here you can see that the software defined that for us the elements as well as the age of this so these inputs are from the wizard the boundaries and the loadings the software doesn't just activate any of the loadings boundaries or elements but also deactivates these so for example in stage 2 as you can see some of the loadings are being deactivated ok 
Okay, so if I close this down, now that we have seen what the software, uh, what the wizard generates us, we can move on to defining our own uh, loadings. But first, let me define the material, uh, the time dependent materials. So from properties, um, we're going to define a creep and shrinkage. However, first let me uh, change the units. So from kilonewtons and meters to millimeters and newtons. So we're going to do these in megapascals. Next, go into creep and shrinkage, add, and just simply input the name as deck. Define the code, and then just input the strength of the material as well as the notional size. By clicking on show results, the software is going to generate us the creep coefficient in the shrinkage strain graphs. You can close this down, and by pressing OK, you can see that this has been defined for us. Similarly, for compressive strengths, add just input DAC. Again, choose the code as zero code, and because this is the mean compressive strength, this is, will be eight megapascals larger. And as you can see over here, the software has generated thus the graph. Okay, so now that we have defined these uh, time-dependent materials, we actually need to connect them to our concrete. So in order to do this, we're going to material link, and just simply select deck for both the creep and shrinkage and the compressive strength. Then choose the material and just have it as a selected material. We can add this. As you can see, the connection has been made. If I close this down, you can see that the time-dependent materials turn from blue to black, which means that now they are being used and they're assigned to this particular material here. Okay, so moving on from the uh, time-dependent materials, we're going to apply some loadings. So for that first, let me define the static load cases. So from load, static load cases, just specify temperature and the type of this will be a temperature load. And by simply pressing add, you can see that this has been added to all the static load cases that the software has already generated for us. We can close this down and close this down as well. And now in order to apply the temperature loads, we can go on to temperature and pre-stress. But first, let me show you the kinds of uh, the temperature loading that we're going to apply. So moving back to the presentation itself, I'm just going to move on. So for temperature loadings, we're going to apply a uniform form temperature component and a nonlinear temperature difference component. As you can see it on the drawings as well, we're going to have A and D. Okay, so for the nonlinear temperature difference component, here you can see the uh, drawing for it and the applied lo uh, temperature loadings. So as per the drawing uh, over here, we're going to apply DT1 as 13 degrees decreasing to 3 degrees because our section is larger than 0.8 meters and this will be from 0 to 0.15 meters and then the temperature from 3 degrees is going to decrease to 0 which will be from 0.15 meters to 4 meter, uh, 0.4 meters and similarly from the bottom we're going to have it from 0 to 0, uh, 0 0.15 meters we are going to have a temperature decrease of 2.5 degrees to zero. So moving back to the software itself, we're going to apply these as element temperatures and beam section temperatures. So starting off with the element temperature, we have defined the load case for this as temperature, and we're going to have no uh, load group name as this is not going to be applied during the construction stages, but rather in the post-construction stage. So the temperature that we are, we are applying onto this will be 15 degrees. Apply. Let me just select the element. So just from the front view, by selecting the tool, I'm just going to select the element and apply 
put everything onto these. Using the uh, initial view, we can clear the screen, so you won't have the loading. Uh, let me just remove the uh, modes. Okay. okay. Next, we're going to apply the beam section temperatures. So for this, the section type will be PSC, so pre-stressed concrete. For the width, we're going to use the section uh, width defined by the software. And as I specified previously, we're just going to input 0 and 115 uh, 50 millimeters, and the temperatures are going to decrease from 3, 13 degrees to 3. And again, just select the elements onto which we're going to apply these loadings. This can be done by using the select previous option, so as you can see the elements are selected, and now I just simply press add. And the same in the same way we're going to apply the other temperatures, so from 150 millimeters to 400, it's going to decrease from 3 to 0. Okay, and finally for the bottom part, it's going to start from 0 and up to 150 millimeters and the temperature is decreasing from 2.5 uh, Celsius to 0. And just press add. By pressing apply, you can see that all these temperature effects are being added onto our uh, model. So I can close this down. Next, I will be moving on to the moving load. So just go to moving load, select the moving load code as your code. And first, I will be defining the lanes then the vehicles, and then I'm going to connect them by using a load case. So just going to traffic line lanes, and just specify the lane name as lane 1. In this case, let me change the units from millimeters to meters. It's easier to work with. And just going to specify the eccentricity and this eccentricity will be taken from a reference line which I'm going to define very shortly. So the first eccentricity for lane 1 will be 8.75 meters and the lane width will be 3.5 meters wide. The lane we're going to specify by a number of elements so for that I'm just going to front view and just select the elements onto which the lane will be applied. As you can see it over here, these are selected. And from the elements window, I'm just going to copy these into the um, traffic line lane dialog box. And by pressing add, as you can see, the software has generated the lane onto these eccentricities. And by pressing apply, you can see that the first lane has been defined. Similarly, I'm going to do it for the other lanes as well because it barely takes any time. So just change the eccentricities as we have lanes at different points and just add these in with the new ones. Then press apply. Okay, so the same procedure will be done for the other ones. And as I got to the fourth lane, this is going to be placed onto the other side of the reference line. So this is going to be a minus eccentricity. Add this in, press apply. And as you can see, just in a matter of few clicks, we can define all of our lanes. Finally, the final lane, lane six and just simply apply this onto the elements and press OK. Now I can close this down. As you can see, just in a few minutes, we have generated all of our six lanes from one to six. Okay. So now that we have our lanes, we're going to define the vehicles. So for this, just go onto vehicle. Add, uh, we can add standard ones or user defined. Today I'm going to add uh, standard ones and just simply press apply 
put alum1 and we're going to have an alum3 for S, well, SV100 and just press OK. As you can see, as simple as this, we have our two uh, vehicles defined. So I can just close this down. And in the works tree, you can see how these are being defined and also that these are blue. Now, in order to connect the vehicles to the lanes, I'm going to specify the moving load case. So just create a load case, add, let's say, moving load case. The load model will be LM103 multi straddling. All I need to do is specify the uh, LM3 vehicle. I'm going to ignore the side factor and just simply select all the lanes and press OK. As you can see, this moving load case has been uh, defined for us, and also the lanes are now connected to the vehicles. Now we have finished the moving load um, application. All we need to do is create one more construction stage so that we can account for the time-dependent material effect that uh, we have defined previously. So for this, just simply go to load, construction stage, define construction stage, and add in a new one. So this will be a long-term one, and the duration of this will be 10,000 days. And in this case, because I just want to account for the creep and shrinkage, I'm not going to activate any elements, boundaries, or loads. Just press OK. And if you scroll down, you can see at the bottom that we have our long-term um, construction stage. OK, now I can close this down. And our model is finished. So in order to save time, I'm just going to open the analyzed model. Okay, so over here you can see the analyzed model. For this, the only difference that I have made is the reinforcement is added in. So we can just double click on this and we can check the reinforcement over here. And we can also display the reinforcement as shown on the screen. Okay, so let me close this down. And now let's have a look at the result. So, from result, deformations, displacement contour. One of the great advantages of minus civil is that we can check for the results in every single construction stage. So, in this Example, let's look at stage one, the deformed shape in the legend for real displacement, and just simply press apply. And here you can see the uh, deformed shape with the deflections, and also if you want, you can change this to millimeters, so it's more convenient to see the displacement in millimeters. And we can uh, just scroll through the different construction stages so we see how the structure is going to um, deflect. Okay. Um, similarly, the results can be checked for the post construction stage for different load combinations. We can check for moving load as well. Moving on to the force uh, bending moment, so forces and diagrams. And here, let's see due to temperature, and let's see the solid fill. So, we, um, I'm going to change the units to kilonewton meters, it's more convenient for checking the moment. And as you can see over here, that's the bending moment diagram. And again, this can be checked in different construction stages. So let's move on to the stresses. So for beam stresses, again, these can be checked for each construction stage. Let's see in stage one. And we can just go through the different construction stage, how the stresses develop. And finally, we can check this in the post construction stage again and for different uh, load combinations. 
as you can see it over here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is check for the moving loads. So let me just go to initial view and using the moving load tracer we can for any given point on our bridge we can find the uh, most severe placing of the live load of the live load. So the software is going to generate the most um, critical live load pattern for that particular point. So for example in this case element 32 we can apply this and let me take off the values so it's clearer. Okay. And as you can see here are the live loads for that particular point. Also the uh, influence lines, the tandem loads and the UDLs are displayed. Let me show the legend as well. So here you can see the maximum value for the um, major bending moment and on the right hand side you can see the influence lines and also the uh, units and other information about the particular point. This uh, can be turned into static load case and the coexisting forces can be checked for this. Okay, so let's move on from this to um, Kemba. So the software is going to automatically generate us the Kemba graph. So we can check this and for example for the summation by pressing OK you can see that this is the Kemba graph that we obtain. It uh, should be noted that for each node along the bridge, there are two Kemba um, results. One for the when the el the element is being placed, and one for the next construction stage when the next uh, section is being placed. So you can tell how much the previous one has deflected. Okay, so we can close this down. And similarly, we can check for the Kemba um, table by pressing OK. We can check this is the Kemba control. So as you can see over here, these are the Kembas that we need to provide. And for for example, in the case of node 12, this uh, the Kemba is being provided in construction stage 7. And throughout the different stages, you can check how the uh, deflections will change up until the point when the entire uh, bridge deck is in level. Okay, so I can close this down. Moving on to the uh, tendon stress losses, we can check these in the results tables. So tendon stress loss, and as you can see over here, the stress losses are broken down into different components such as creep and shrinkage, relaxation loss and so on. We can also uh, change the units so we can see these in megapascals. Okay. And also this can be checked for different uh, construction stages for different tendons. Furthermore, by right clicking on the screen we can check the tendon time dependent gra uh, loss graph and again this can be checked for each construction stage. Okay, we close this down. Um, also, it should be noted that all of our tables are fully Excel compatible, so this can be exported into Excel and you can work with it over there. So, moving on from the uh, stresses, we can carry out the pre stress concrete uh, design. So, by defining the code to which we're uh, doing this, we can define the parameters. Again, the design code, the national annex. We can define different strut angles, as well as we can uh, specify our output parameters, such as for ULS and for SLS. And the design data can be uh, specified as well. So for example, for the design material, here you can see that this has, uh, I have already defined this the code for the concrete and the grade of this and also the compressive strength. Furthermore, the rebar uh, data has been specified for the code and the grade of this. For the output positions, we have uh, the design position and the output position. So for design, uh, 
this is a very useful feature, especially when you're working with a larger bridge and you don't want to carry out the design for every single um, element in it. So what you can do is just select certain elements and carry out the design for this. So just by pressing apply, the design will be carried out, carried out for these elements. Furthermore, well actually in my case I have uh, carried out the design for the entire deck as there are not, many, uh, not too many elements. However, for the output position, um, I have only specified one. So the output position works the same way. We specify a section, and the software is going to generate uh, for this an Excel report. And let me show you the Excel report. So this is the Excel report. This has been carried out for element number 51. The design conditions are uh, shown and all of this are in accordance with the Eurocode so this is shown to you including the clause so you can go back and check if you want. Um, also the uh, moment resistance calculations and all the other checks are uh, specified and if these pass you have OK, if these uh, fail you just have NG. So you know where to go back and uh, which parameters to change. So moving back to the software itself. Here we have the uh, bridge. So for the serviceability load combinations, we first need to specify the load combinations. So just go to results and load combinations. And within the concrete uh, design, I have already predefined these. This can be done either manually or automatically. So, for example, with auto generation, just by simply selecting the code and here specifying the load uh, factors, the leading variables, and traffic loads, you can generate all your um, load combinations. And as you can see over here, we have three for strength, so ultimate limit states, uh, and 10 for. Uh, serviceability or ULS. As soon as we have these co uh, load combinations, these can be put into the serviceability load combination type. So here, uh, all we need to uh, specify is it whether these are quasi-permanent, frequent, or characteristic ones. Okay. So at this point, we can perform the design, which you can see that I have already done. And from the result tables, you can check for all the ULS and SLS results. However, instead of showing you further tables, I'll just show you the push stress concrete result diagram. So for this, we can check for the force. Let's see, with the solid fill. From the front view, let me zoom in a bit. You can see how the bar part is very close to the uh, the solid fill. The bar part represents the resistance of the sections and the solid fill represents the um, applied force onto these. Similarly, this can be checked for stress. So for example, for point number three and for compression, compression and press apply, you can see this is the distribu uh, distribution. The bar part again is the allowable stress and the uh, solid fill is the actual um, applied stress onto these elements. Okay, um, as we have finished with the uh, design, what we can do is the report. So for this, let me just go back to results and um, let's see displacement contour. Apply. So for example, if, if you would like to input this picture into your uh, report, you can just right click and click on dynamic report image and press OK. As soon as you do that, the software is going to save this and you're going to have it in the report uh, tab. Let's check um, this for some tables. So the beam, for, uh, beam forces due to temperature and just let's say for three, uh, for element number three and four. Okay, so this can be again taken into the dynamic report table. Okay, 
and now as you can see this has been this has occurred in the table in the uh, tab and when we want to uh, generate the report we just go into tools dynamic report generator and just let's create a new one so here into this uh, word document you can input any of these uh, saved images or tables so let's let's just start with the deformed uh, contours as you can see over here software automatically puts this in let's put in the tables as well here are the tables and then we can input some section summaries as well Okay, well, everything is in Newton millimeters. Let me change that into meters and kilonewtons. It's more convenient. Now that the units are changed, we can just simply go on to dynamic report auto regeneration. And for this, we can just simply select images, tables, everything that we want to update, and just click on regenerate. And at this point, the software is going to automatically regenerate all the um, uh, numbers for us. So as you can see it over here, it has been changed to meters. This is very useful if you're going to a meeting, for example, and then your model is being changed. You can just simply change the model, carry out uh, the analysis, design, and then you can just simply auto-regenerate the um, report, and this will be all done for you automatically. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation. Um, Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, you can put these into the chat box or you can send these to UK support at midasuser.com. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.